In this two hours of non-stop jokes, we bring you a weekly compilation of jokes one after another. These were our best weekly jokes. Here we bring you more than a hundred jokes. So let's get cracking with the jokes of our first week. In our first joke of the day, we bring you a boy who want to have five wives. A five-year-old boy watched a story on the TV about an emperor and all his wives. Once the story was finished, he turned to his parents that were sitting on a couch and said, Mommy, when I grow up, I would also like to have five wives. Now what do you want to do with five wives? One will cook nice food for me, one will go and walk with me, one will clean the house for me, one will bathe me, and the last one will sing for me. Then at night time, I don't have to accompany you to sleep anymore. At this stage, the boy thought for a minute. Then he said, Okay, that won't work, because I still want to sleep with you, Mommy. Mom's eyes were filled with tears of happiness, and she asked, But who will your five wives sleep with then? Let them sleep with Daddy. Dad's eyes were filled with tears of happiness. <laughs> In the next joke, we bring you some African animals and a bottle of moonshine. The rabbit was walking through the bush when he saw a bottle of warm moonshine lying in the sun. He took a sip and immediately passed out. A little while later, the jackal came walking past, saw the rabbit lying there and the bottle of moonshine. The jackal think, before I eat the rabbit, I am going to have a sip of that moonshine. So he took a sip, but immediately passed out. Then the hyena came walking past saw the other two and the bottle of moonshine and think, I am going to eat those two, but we'll first have a bit of the moonshine. Took a sip and immediately passed out. Now the lion came past, same story as the other three, and he also passed out. Sometime later the rabbit woke up, have a look around, and saw the other three passed out. He thinks to himself, I am never going to drink again. I just become too aggressive. Our next joke is about a mother-in-law that have disappeared. My mother-in-law have been staying with us for many years when she disappeared. We haven't seen her for the last two weeks. Yesterday, a police officer came by to speak with us. He said, I think all of you must prepare yourselves for the worst. Now, I must go find all her clothes that I threw away, as well as all her extra stuff that I gave away. If we must prepare for the worst, then she is definitely coming back. Our next joke is about sleeping tablets. While my wife was at the doctor for a normal checkup, she asks the doctor, Doctor, my husband works very hard. He is extremely tired at night. Is there anything you can do to help him? That's no problem, ma'am. Here are some sleeping tablets. Thank you so much, doctor. And at what time in the evening should my husband take these tablets? Oh no, let me explain. Your husband is the one that needs to rest. The sleeping tablets are for you. Our next joke is about a guy in a taxi who is having his phone stolen. This guy was sitting in the back of a taxi going through his messages on his mobile phone. He then received a message from his wife. The message read, Are we making love tonight? He vigorously starts to write his response, but just as the message was ready to be sent, a guy stuck his hand through the taxi's window, grabbed the phone, and ran off with it. He immediately jumped out of the taxi and shouted at the guy. Stop, stop. I don't care about the phone. Please just press send. <laughs> In the following joke, a guy is cleaning his house when he found some bottles. John is busy cleaning his house. It's being sold. He lost his house, lost his job, lost his wife, and she took the kids because of his drinking problem. While busy in the garage, John comes across some boxes and kicks one box and hears bottles inside. John opens the box, sees it as his empty alcohol bottles. He then takes the first empty bottle out, looks at it and said, Because of you, I lost my house. He took another bottle out, looked at it and said, Because of you, I lost my job. He took a third bottle out and said, Because of you, my wife and kids left me. Then John takes a bottle out, but this bottle is still full. He looked at the bottle, puts it one side and said, You got next to nothing to do with this. <laughs> the next joke is about a couple getting a divorce and need to split everything. Let me tell you about this couple with three children that was getting a divorce. 
they decided to divide everything up amongst themselves. In court, the judge asked, And the children? Well, the couple chatted amongst themselves for a couple of minutes, and then the husband said, You honor as we cannot divide the three children amongst the two of us. We have decided to try for a fourth child. Then we can easily divide the children between the two of us. Court was adjourned. The only problem was that nine months later, this couple had twins. <laughs> In the following joke, just don't step on the ducks. Three women die and go to heaven. The angel says, We only have one rule, don't step on the ducks. So, they enter heaven, and there are ducks all over. It is almost impossible not to step on a duck. They try their best to avoid them. The first woman accidentally steps on one. The angel says, Your punishment for stepping on the ducks is being chained together for eternity with the ugliest man. The next day, the second woman steps on a duck, and the angel says, Your punishment is chained to the most extreme ugliest man. The third woman, not wanting to be chained for all eternity to an ugly man, very carefully looks where she steps. She goes months without stepping on a duck. One day, the angel comes down with a handsome guy and chains them together. I wonder what I did to deserve this. I don't know about you, but I stepped on a duck. <laughs> the next joke is hilarious. It's about some medical students. First-year students at med school were receiving their first anatomy class with a real dead human body. They all gathered around the surgery table with the body covered with a white sheet. The professor started the class saying, as a doctor, it is necessary to have two important qualities. The first is that you are not disgusted by anything involving the human body. The professor pulled back the sheet, stuck his finger in the butt of the corpse, withdrew it and stuck it in his mouth. Go ahead and do the same thing, he told his students. The students freaked out, hesitated for some time, but eventually took turns sticking a finger in the butt of the dead body and putting it in their mouths. When everyone finished, the professor looked at them and said, the second most important quality is observation. I stuck in my middle finger and licked on my index finger. <laughs> in the following joke, I ask you all to think about this poor guy. Always think about those people going through a rough time. I mean, my wife left me for another man. All that is left now is a pointless, lonely, miserable life. And while you might have normality in your life, I ask you to think about that poor guy being with her now. <laughs> in the following joke, these three mothers each have a different obsession. These three mothers and their small children were at a psychiatrist for group therapy. He observed them for some time playing with their children. And then he said, I have observed all of you mothers, and you all have obsessions. He then turned to the first mother and said, You are obsessed with eating. This is why you called your daughter Candy. The first mother was very surprised and acknowledged this. He now turned to the second mother and said, You are obsessed with money. This is why you called your daughter Penny. The second mother was very surprised and acknowledged this. He then turned to the third mother, but before he could say anything, the mother grabbed her son by the hand and said, Come on, Dick, we are leaving immediately. <laughs> now, we bring you the best jokes of our second week. In this first joke of the day, we bring you a father that is having a very good time with his two-year-old daughter. This father was left alone with his two-year-old daughter while his wife went out shopping. As this is the cutest time of their lives, she said, Tea, Daddy. Tea. The daughter went upstairs and brought down a small tea set that she got for birthday, poured her father some water into a small cup, and gave it to him. She then said, Drink, Daddy. Drink. This game went on for about an hour, while Daddy drank all of the tea which his cute daughter poured him to drink. As the mother got back, the father said, Quickly, sit down, sweetheart. Let me show you how cute our daughter is. His daughter poured him another cup of water, and Daddy drank it to show Mommy just how nice the two of them played. His wife got a grin on her face and said, I know you had a lot of fun, and you think this is very cute, but you understand that she is only two years old. Where do you think she get the water from? She can only reach into the toilet. <laughs> In the following joke, we bring you a wife that have spent too much on her credit card, money, and our lovely wives. 
such rough waters to sail over. This businessman got home one evening and shouted at his wife. I just looked at your credit card account. What did you spend all this money on? Things will have to change. What do you mean? How are we going to change things? Well, you will have to learn to clean the house by yourselves. Then we won't need a maid anymore. Is that your only concern? No, it's not. If you learn to make proper food, then we will also not need a chef anymore. The wife got a grin on her face, and then she said, Well, in that case, you will have to learn how to please a woman. Then we don't need a gardener as well. <laughs> in the next joke, we warn you not to laugh at your wife. These two guys were sitting in a bar, having a chat about the effect of science on their lives. The first guy, being very pro-scientist, said, Science is so good today. It can make us live much longer. Well, I can tell you that it's just not true. History has shown us that the better we live and the better we look after our health, the longer we will live. It has nothing to do with those stupid scientists. So they went forward and backwards with different theories about life when they stumble onto the effects of laughing on our bodies. The first guy then said, Science has shown us that if we can laugh at our own mistakes, then we will live longer. The second guy thought for a short bit, and then he had a light bulb moment. He said, That might be true, but science has also shown us that if we can learn to laugh at your wife's mistakes, then we will most definitely live a shorter life. <laughs> In the next joke, we bring you a blonde that have some issues at the library. Do you still go to the library, or do you also get everything from Amazon? Well, this blonde stormed into the library looking very angry. She went to the librarian and said, I am very angry. I have a complaint. The librarian, looking up at this crazy blonde, politely said, And how can I help you today? Well, you see, I borrowed a book last week and it was horrible. The librarian, puzzled by her complaint, keeps her calm then asks, I'm sorry to hear that. Can you please tell me what was wrong with the book? Well, it had too many characters. There was no plot and it was way too long. And above all, too many advertisements. The librarian thought for a few seconds, then got a grin on her face and said, I see. So you are the lady that took the telephone book. <laughs> the next joke is a valuable lesson to all of the husbands. It teach you what to do if the wife is too lazy to do the homework. Frank and Mike were sitting in the pub having a beer. When the conversation swung to their wives, Frank said, my wife is so lazy, I work all day while she is at home. Then I still do most of the cleaning work in the house when I come home from work. I just don't know what to do anymore. Mike took a sip of his beer and said, I feel your pain. I have been there, but not anymore. Oh no, I got that one sorted. Frank was now very eager to hear what Mike did to fix his situation. So he asked, So, Mike, what is your secret? How did you get her to do the homework? You see, Frank? My wife hates cockroaches. One day she saw this cockroach in the kitchen and screamed at me to kill it. So I did. So how did that solve the problem? Well, Frank, after this, she spring cleaned the kitchen, repacked the cupboards and sanitized everything. The very next day, I put that rubber cockroach in the bathroom. <laughs> the following joke is about a wife that is going on a business trip to Italy. This husband's wife was going on a business trip to Italy. He took her to the airport to drop her off for her flight. His wife then said, Honey, is there anything I can bring you back from Italy? The husband jokingly told his wife, An Italian girl. Will be nice, thank you. As the husband picked her up from the airport after her business trip, he jokingly asked, And what about the present I asked for? Which present are you talking about? Don't tell me you forgot about the Italian girl I asked for. The wife got a grin on her face and then she said, Well, you will have to wait for nine months to see if it's a boy or a girl. <laughs> In the upcoming joke, two very old ladies are going for an afternoon drive. Two old ladies went for a drive on a Saturday afternoon. Neither of them could really see that well anymore. 
The passenger thought to herself, I am sure Mildred just drove through that red light. Can't see that well, but it looked like it. A few minutes later, they drove through another red light. This time, the passenger thought, Oh my goodness. She just went through another red light. Looked like it. Okay, let's focus now. We'll be very alert. Now at the third intersection, the passenger was very alert, and they drove through another red light. She shouted, Mildred, you have just driven through three red lights. Old Mildred looked very surprised and said, Oh dear, so am I driving. <laughs> in the next joke, we show you what two blondes do when they lock their car keys in the car. Two blondes were exiting a restaurant when they discovered, to their horror, that they locked their keys in their car. The one blonde says to the other, What do we do? Do we get a coat hanger and pick the lock? The second blonde think for a moment, and then she replied, No, we can't do that. People will think we're trying to break into the car. The first blonde also think for a moment, and then said, I think we should then get a knife to cut the rubber. Then we can pop the lock. Once again, the second blonde think for a moment before she answers. No, we cannot cut the rubbers. People will think we're too stupid to use the coat hanger. The first blonde is now getting very nervous and said, Well, we better think of something quick because it's starting to rain. And the sunroof is open. <laughs> the next joke is about a very wealthy art collector. A New York lawyer, representing a very wealthy art collector, went to see his client. Sir, I have some good news for you, and I have some bad news for you. The art collector replied, I've had a bad day so far, so I think I want to hear the good news first. The attorney then said, Well, I met with your wife this morning, and she informed me that she has two pictures, for which she paid $5,000. She thinks it will bring in a minimum of $20 million. I think she could be right. The wealthy art collector replied enthusiastically. I did not expect that of my wife. Well done to her. She has become a brilliant businesswoman. You've just made my day. Now I can handle the bad news. What is it? The attorney with a grin on his face then replied. The pictures are of you in bed with your secretary. Your wife needs a divorce. In our next joke, this guy have a beautiful blonde wife that think he is working too hard. A married couple wakes up one morning, and while still lying in bed, the beautiful blonde wife turns to her husband and says, Maybe you shouldn't go to work today. What do you mean? Why shouldn't I go to work today? I think you've been working too hard, so maybe instead of going to the office, you should take a few days off, pack a suitcase, and go stay with a friend for a few days away from home. The husband thought for a moment and decided to jump at the suggestion before it disappeared. Within moments, he was up, dressed, and started packing clothes into a bag. He then asks his wife, Just out of curiosity, how did you come to the conclusion that I've been working so hard that I need a break? You were dreaming about your work all night. Really? How do you know I was having dreams about work? Because every two minutes, you were shouting your secretary's name. <laughs> Here is the best jokes of our third week. In our first joke of the day, this grandfather explains the difference between a sideline, a girlfriend, and a wife. This young boy was having a chat with his grandfather when he suddenly asked a weird question. Hey, Grand. What is the difference between a wife, a girlfriend, and a sideline? I would like to be able to explain it to the boys at school. His grandfather thinks hard about how to answer this, and then starts. Your sideline is like honey. It's very sweet and you can never get enough of it. However, being so sweet, it gives you diabetes. Your girlfriend is like rice and curry. It's still very nice, but you can only have a bit of it sometimes, as it gives you cholesterol. Your wife, on the other hand, is like peanut butter and jelly. If there is nothing else to eat, then you are too glad to eat it. <laughs> In our next joke, this little girl asks her mother where her gray hair comes from. One day, a little girl was sitting 
watching her mother do the dishes in the kitchen sink. She suddenly notices that her mother had several strands of gray hair sticking out in contrast to her brunette head. She looked at her mother inquisitively and asked, Why is some of your hair gray, Mom? Her mother, after thinking about it for a short bit, replied, Well, every time you do something naughty and make me cry or unhappy, one of my hairs turns gray. The little girl thought about this revelation for a while and then said, Mom, how come all of Grandma's hair is gray? <laughs> in the following joke, these two guys are having a chat in a bar. Obviously, they are not sober. Two men were sitting next to each other in a pub in London. The barman can't help but to overhear their conversation. The one bloke looks at the other and speaks. I can't help but to think, from listening to your accent, that you're from Ireland. Oh yes, and proudly so, if I must say. And where are you from? Me too. And where about in Ireland are you from? I'm from Dublin. And you? So am I. And from what part of Dublin, if I might ask? I lived on McCoy Street, in the old part of town. No way. It's such a small world. I also lived there. About this time, a regular at the pub called Vicky walks up to the bar, sits down, and orders a drink. Brian the barman walks over to Vicky, shaking his head and mutters, Hey, Vicky, it's gonna be a long night tonight. Why do you say that, Brian? The Murphy twins from Dublin are drunk again. <laughs> In the next joke, we bring honor to all the mothers on Mother's Day. Sarah went to town, looking for a job. The storefront window had an advertisement. Help wanted, the ad read. No training provided, it began, a flicker of doubt igniting in Sarah's mind. She read further. Zero compensation. Now she is truly worried. Unbreakable contract, lifelong commitment. Sarah's eyes widened. The final line, underlined with dramatic flair. This critical role will shape lives. She peeked through the window. Inside, a chorus of laughter filled the air. Welcome, said a woman, her voice a melody of pleasure. The sign wasn't a warning, it was a badge of honor. With a grin, she stepped inside, ready to take on the most challenging, rewarding job in the world, mother. Let's all love our mothers this upcoming Mother's Day. In the following joke, this teacher gets in trouble because she is showing too much cleavage. This teacher loves dresses with low necklines. She had good cleavage, and the grade 10 boys loved it. The mothers, on the other hand, were little concerned and complained to the principal. The principal called her in and asked, Can you please do something about the cleavage? The mothers are complaining. The following morning, the teacher had a carnation, neatly tucked into the cleavage. During nature study, she asked the class. Now what do carnations need to grow? A quick response from one of the boys was, Milk teacher. He was immediately sent to the principal for disciplinary action. The principal asked the boy, Why did you say a carnation need milk to grow? As you well know, it needs water to grow. The boy replied, Gee, sir, I didn't know a carnation had such a long stem. In the next joke, this old lady is at a chemist looking for birth control pills. An elderly woman went into the pharmacy. The pharmacist asked, Is there anything that I can assist you with? The elderly lady responds, I would like to have some birth control pills, please. Taken aback by this request, the pharmacist thought for a minute and then said, Excuse me, lady, you must be at least 75 years old. What possible use could you have for birth control pills? The old lady responds to the pharmacist. The birth control pills help me to sleep better at night. The pharmacist, now very confused, asks. Are you sure you are not looking for sleeping tablets? How in the world do birth control pills help you to sleep? I put the birth control tablets in my granddaughter's orange juice. Then I sleep much better at night. <laughs> in our next joke, Little Johnny asks his mother why his dad is so bold. Little Johnny was sitting at the breakfast table one morning while his mother was dishing up breakfast. Little Johnny had a brainwave, so he asks his mother, Mom, dad is so bold, why is there no hair on his head? 
little Johnny's mom had to think long and hard because little Johnny always have a mischievous streak. She answers, Well, Johnny, your dad has no hair on his head because he is the cleverest man that I have ever met. Well, he wouldn't be little Johnny if he didn't know how to respond. So little Johnny, he immediately then asks his mother. So, mom, why do you have so many hairs on your head then? <laughs> In the next joke, this guy runs past some prostitutes every morning. Hilarious. In today's comedy, we bring you a funny joke about a prostitute. This guy went running one morning, but on the corner of a street which he was running past, stood a prostitute. Jokingly, he screamed at her. How much for your service? $150. The runner jokingly shouts back. How about $5? She just shows him to go away. This game goes on every day and the guy is very happy with himself joking with this prostitute. One day the guy went jogging with his wife. They followed the same route and once again, there stood the prostitute on the street corner. Now obviously the guy is very careful not to make any jokes while his wife is with him. As they pass the prostitute, she shouted at the two of them running. Now, can you see what you get for $5? <laughs> In the following joke, we remind you all again about Mother's Day. Mothers are just the best. When Forrest Gump's mother said that live is like a box of chocolates, she was probably right. Then I heard that chocolates had therapeutic powers, apparently. They can heal temper tantrums and break any sadness. Your wife and your mother will know this for sure. Remember when you were young, your mother knew that the only bar that was child-friendly was a chocolate bar. Do you still remember all the effort mom took to get you through college or university? It was because mom wanted you to become a smarty. Then remember when you went to the conspiracy theories convention? It was again like a box of chocolates. It was full of nuts. I have finally come to the realization that I am nuts about chocolates. But I am not alone in this. Please don't forget your mother's this coming Mother's Day. Buy her some chocolates. In the following joke, a engaged lady is concerned that things will change once she gets married. Two girls were having a chat. One of them was engaged and were about to get married. The second lady was already married. The engaged lady asked, Jenny, I have heard so many times that things change once you get married. What is your experience of it? Well, it changes because you are both in a new environment with new commitments. But which part are you specifically asking about? Well, I am worried that things will change with our love life. Will Joe still be so romantic? And will he still love me once we are married? Off cause Joe will still love you. He always loved married woman. <laughs> Here is our best jokes for the fourth week. In today's best funny shorts of the week, we start with a school reunion. This woman and her husband were at her 40 year school reunion. What an achievement to be there. They were seated on a table with some of her old school friends. But at the end of the table, there sat a single man sipping away at his whiskey. After some time, her husband asked her, Honey, do you know that guy at the end of the table? I know him well. We were dating in our last year of school, but I broke up with him just before school ended. Now, is the poor guy still married? Apparently not. He started drinking as soon as we left school, and he has been drinking ever since. The husband looked at the man and spoke. Unbelievable to think that 40 years after leaving school, that man is still celebrating. <laughs> In the next joke, we bring you one of our favorites, Little Johnny. This teacher asks the class, What do we get from chickens? Oh, wonderful. Look at all the hands. Yes, Mary. Teacher, we get eggs and we get meat. Wow, that's correct, Mary. Well done. Now tell me, class, what do we get from sheep? Lots of hand, I see. Mmm, yes, Billy. Teacher, from sheep we get wool, we get chops. Oh, and then we get that nice leg of lamb, which mommy does in the oven. Well done, Billy. Now tell me, class, what do we get from a pig? Yes, Sarah. Teacher, we get bacon and spare ribs. 
Well done, Sarah. My, but this class is very sharp today. Now can anyone tell me what we get from a cow? Now little Johnny just cannot contain himself anymore. He jumps up and down. Okay, Johnny, I haven't forgotten about you. So what do we get from a cow? From a cow teacher, we get homework. <laughs> the following joke is about a guy who have a problem with his legs. So this guy walks into the doctor's office. Doctor, I need your help. I have a serious problem with my legs. So is it painful? Is your feet burning? Give me a bit more information. No, doctor. It's much more serious. You need to listen with that thing around your neck to my knee. The doctor listens with the stethoscope to the guy's knees and hear the knee saying, I need 20 bucks. I need 20 buck. Now listen to my calves, doctor. It gets worse. The doctor then listened to the guy's calves. The calves keep saying, I need 10 bucks. I need 10 bucks. He then listened to the feet and the feet said, I need five bucks. I need five bucks. He then said, I have never heard this problem before. But I think I know what is wrong. Is it serious, doctor? Well, I think your leg is broke in three places. In the next joke, we bring you an old farmer who have never been in a big city. This old farmer have never been to a big city. As his farm was in a very rural area, they have also never been fortunate to watch television. One day, they were invited to a wedding in the big city and decided to go. They were booked into a modern hotel. When they reached the city, the woman all went shopping. As the farmer were very scared of the city, he and his son were waiting in the foyer of their hotel for the woman to return. There was a lift in the foyer, and the farmer had never seen one of these before. As it happens, an old lady went into the lift, and the doors closed. The farmer was very intrigued by this contraption. A short bit later, the lift's doors open again, and out walked this beautiful young woman. The farmer was shocked by this technology. He looked at his son and said, My son, run as quick as you can. Go and fetch your mother. Immediately. <laughs> the following joke is about a fisherman and some really bad weather. One Saturday morning, this guy got up early and quietly got dressed. He made himself some lunch, grabbed the dog, and slipped quietly to the garage. He hooked up the boat to the truck and proceeded to back out into a torrential downpour. It was raining heavily and the wind was howling. So he pulled back into the garage, turned on the radio, and discovered that the weather would be bad for the whole day. So he decided to stay home and spent some time with his lovely wife. He went back into the house, quietly got undressed, and slipped back into bed behind his wife. He cuddled up to her with anticipation and whispered, the weather out there is terrible. His loving wife of 10 years replied, Can you believe my stupid husband is out fishing in this weather? <laughs> in the upcoming joke, this couple have some marriage problems. This wife was visiting a friend while her husband was at home. You know, Jen, Mike and I have not been happily married. We have been battling for years. That's unfortunate. Are you guys trying to figure things out? Well... Mike has made a dartboard for his garage, with my face on it. Every evening, he will go and play darts in the garage. Wow, is it that bad? Well, Mike is not very much of a darts player, so he has never been able to hit the dartboard. Perhaps that's a good thing. Just give him a call and see what he's doing. At this exact time, Mike was practicing darts, but still missing the dartboard, with the picture of his wife on it, when his phone rang. Yes, dear. What am I doing? You know what I am doing. I am missing you. <laughs> now, we will bring you a funny joke about a parrot. One day a man went to an auction. While there, he saw this beautiful parrot and decided to place a bid on the parrot. He really wanted this parrot, so he got caught up in the bidding process. He kept on bidding but kept getting outbid, so he bid higher and higher and higher. Finally, after he bid way more than he initially intended to pay for the bird, he won the bid. The parrot was his at last. With a big smile on his face and feeling very proud of himself, he went to pay. As he was paying for the parrot, 
he said to the auctioneer, I sure hope this parrot can talk. I would hate to have paid this much for the parrot, only to find out he can't talk. Don't worry, said the auctioneer to the man, with a smile on his face. The parrot can talk. Who do you think kept bidding against you? <laughs> Our second last joke is about a schoolboy with a problem. A father standing in his son's bedroom was astonished to see the bed was made up. Then he saw an envelope on the bed. It was addressed to him. With a worried look on his face, he opened the envelope and read the letter. Dear Dad, it's with great regret that I'm writing to you. I had to escape with my new girlfriend because I wanted to avoid a scene with you and mom. Dad, she's pregnant. She owns a trailer in the woods. We will raise our kids there. We will grow marijuana and sell it. Dad, I'm 15 and know how to take care of myself. I will be back to visit so you can get to see your grandchildren. Love your son. P.S. Dad, I'm at Mike's house. None of the above is true. Just to remind you there are worse things in life than the school report that's on the kitchen table. Please call when it is safe to come home. Now we bring you our fifth week's best joke compilation. Today we bring you 10 jokes, one after another. These are our best pick of the week. Here we go. Our first joke of the day is a joke about married life. This man thought it a good idea to bring a work friend home for dinner, unannounced after work. Obviously, his wife was not very impressed by this. She starts to scream at the poor man while his friend just sits there quietly observing. My house is a mess. My makeup is not done, and look at my hair, she screams. Then I haven't done the dishes yet, and look, I am still in my pajamas. Now you expect me to start cooking for the two of you. I will not do that. You are so inconsiderate, she went on. What is wrong with you? What were you thinking? Why on earth did you bring him over here at this time? The husband looked at his wife and spoke. This man told me at work that he is thinking of getting married. I told him that he must come home with me for dinner. Then he can see exactly what married life is like. <laughs> In our second joke of the day, this 65-year-old man needed surgery urgently. A 65-year-old man went to see his doctor. The doctor examined him and told him that he needed surgery urgently. The old man looked at the doctor and told him that no one will operate on him except his son, who is a well-known surgeon. So the doctor admitted the old man immediately and called the old man's son to come and take care of the operation. In the theater, surrounded by nurses and the anesthetist, the old man watched with a concerned look on his face. When the anesthetist was about to give the old man anesthetic, the old man called his son, the well-known surgeon, over. Son, don't be worried about operating on your old man. Just do your best and remember that if something happens to me during surgery, that your mother will be living with you and your wife for the rest of her life. <laughs> now we bring you a joke about a gardener who have been with this family for many years. This gardener worked for years for this family. The husband had a very close relationship with him and always looked after his well-being. Whenever the husband got something new, he used to give the old one to the gardener. When he bought a new bicycle, then he would give his old bicycle to the gardener. When he bought a new TV, he would give his old TV to the gardener. This went on for many years, and it was an unwritten rule in the household. When anything got replaced, the gardener got the old one. One day the husband and wife got divorced, and the husband got home with another woman. The gardener resigned with immediate effect. <laughs> in our next joke, a mechanic meets a heart surgeon. Hilarious. This mechanic was busy working on a vehicle's engine when a heart surgeon walked into his workshop. Very proudly, he said to the heart surgeon to come have a look at everything he did to the engine. You see, doctor, I had to open the heart of the vehicle because it had a problem. I decided it's time to do a complete rebuild. All the worn parts have been removed, machining was done, and I replaced all the worn parts with brand new parts. Now the heart of the vehicle is as good as new. It was then put back into the vehicle. It will now last for many years to come. Now doctor, this is the same than what you do with a human heart. So, 
why do I get paid so little? And you get paid so much for practically doing the same job. The heart surgeon grinned at the mechanic and said, son, have you ever tried to rebuild that engine while the engine was running? <laughs> In our next joke, this woman visits a dentist, but is very scared. A woman went to the dentist, but she was very afraid of having a dental extraction, let alone anything being done to her teeth. But as she had a massive toothache, there was no other option than for the dentist to extract some teeth. She was just very scared for the procedure. The dentist looked at the worried woman and haven't even started when she shouted, Give me strength! I will rather get pregnant than going through the pain of having my tooth extracted. The dentist, who loves having some humor to calm his patients, looks at the woman with a smile on his face and said, Please make up your mind what you want to do, because I need to know to which position I need to adjust the dentist chair. <laughs> In the upcoming joke, we have a blonde woman who meets her husband in prison. This blonde woman was visiting her husband in prison. Her husband was complaining to her about how tired he was. After the visit, on her way out, she noticed a prison warden who looked like he oversaw her husband's section. She walked over to him and confronted him about her husband condition. She said, my husband is very tired. You are giving him too much work and he just can't handle it anymore. The warden, very surprised at this, said, Ma'am, your husband sits in his cell every day, play cards, eat and smoke. That's about all your husband do, so I promise you he is getting enough rest and there is no need to be concerned about his well-being. The blonde woman, not very impressed with the warden's response, said, I don't believe you. My husband said he is extremely tired because he has been digging a tunnel for the last two months. Our next joke is a very funny joke about a guy visiting a psychiatrist. This guy went to visit the psychiatrist with a huge problem. He told the psychiatrist that his wife is continuously having affairs. She is not even discreet about it, which would have made him feel much better. The psychiatrist asked how the man knew about this. Well, the man explained, every evening his wife goes to Harry's pub to have a couple of drinks. While there, she will go and sleep with everyone who asks her. The guy explained that this was making him mad and that he doesn't know what to do anymore. The psychiatrist, after listening to the man's story, said, First, sir, you must calm down, then you can think clearly. A problem is always bigger than what it seems, the psychiatrist then asks. Now tell me, sir, where exactly is Harry's bar? <laughs> Now we bring you a joke about a beautiful woman at a hairdresser. This beautiful woman was at a hairdresser to have her hair done. While the hairdresser was busy with her hair, she noticed this very attractive man sitting calmly, probably also waiting his turn. She turned to the man and said, You are the most handsome man I have ever seen. How about me and you meet later today for a romantic evening? The man replied that he was married and that he can't see how that will work. The woman said that she does not have a problem with him being married and he can just call his wife and tell her that he is over at a friend and that he will be home later. That way, they can still have their romantic meeting. The husband responded to this by saying, How about you tell her yourself, as she is the one that is dressing your hair? <laughs> Our second last joke is about a man visiting a doctor with a huge problem. A man went to his doctor as he was very concerned about his health. At the doctor's surgery, the man sits down and explained to the doctor that he's very worried. When he is at work, he will find himself suddenly standing with his clipboard in hand, not knowing what he was supposed to do. He would completely forget what the task was that he was supposed to do. He is concerned as it is affecting his daily life and puts his job in jeopardy. So. The man asked the doctor, Doctor, what is wrong with me and what can be done about it? The doctor, after listening to the man's story, said, Well, I don't think there is anything major to be concerned about. Just tell me for how long you have had this condition. The man looked at the doctor and answered, What condition are you talking about, doctor?
Here is our best jokes compilation for our sixth week running. Today we bring you 10 of our best short jokes of the week, one after another. In our first joke, we bring you a burglar in the middle of the night. This guy went to bed early one evening. He was very tired from a long day at work. Somewhere around midnight, he woke up, a voice whispering in his ear. Honey, someone is in the house. I think we have a breaking. This is the worst way to wake up at night. The guy jumped out of bed and without putting the light on, grabbed his baseball bat and head for the stairs. Without making a noise, he quietly walks from room to room while switching on every light behind him. He is ready to defend his family with his baseball bat and are building confidence as he gets more rooms liberated. Once all the rooms have been declared safe, he stands there thinking, what noise it could have been. And then it hit him. He is a bachelor and don't have a wife. Who gave him the message? He rushed up the stairs to find his bedroom empty. They stole everything. <laughs> In our next joke, we bring you a very wealthy man that have a final request before he dies. This request goes to the priest, a doctor, and a lawyer. A wealthy man on his deathbed and calls his lawyer, doctor, and the priest. He tells them each will receive money to put in his coffin before they bury him. So each of them promised. So the wealthy man passed away and they buried him. After the burial, the three were at a family gathering and find some privacy to discuss the last request of the wealthy man. The doctor said, I couldn't put it in. The hospital needs a new children ward. I donated it to the hospital. The priest replied, Don't feel bad. I donated the money to the children's home. The children have so much need. The lawyer looked at them and said, You must be ashamed of yourself. I was the only honest one among us. You did put the money in? The priest said, I did not see anything in the coffin before closing it. The lawyer looked at them and said, I put a check in his suit pocket. <laughs> in the following joke, we have a drunk guy in the middle of the night that needs a push. This couple woke up one night with a loud knock on their door. The husband got out of bed, went to the front door to see who it was. It was a drunken guy, standing in the rain asking the husband if he cannot please help him with a push. The husband said, no, go away and close the door. Once back in bed, his wife asked who it was and got very angry with her husband not giving the guy a hand. She said, do you remember when your car broke down a couple of months ago and two guys helped you with a push? I am very disappointed in you. The husband felt very guilty, put on his rain jacket and went to go and look for the guy. Once outside in the dark, he shouted, do you still need a push? Yes, the guy shouted back. There, the drunken guy was sitting on a swing, waiting for the husband to push him. <laughs> in our next joke, we bring you an old man with a weird limp in his step. Two doctors were walking down the street back to the hospital when they saw an old man walking towards them with a strange limp, and then his walk straightened up again. They decide to challenge each other and see if they can figure out what is wrong with the old man. The one doctor stops the old man and said, my friend and I are doctors at the nearby hospital, and we saw your limp, and now we are trying to guess what is wrong with you. Would you mind following us to the hospital so we can examine you? The old man agrees. At the hospital, the one doctor said, I think it's lumbago, but my colleague says it's probably arthritis. Do you have any illness that we should know about? Can you enlighten us on any current medical condition? Well says the old man with a smile on his face. Both off you are wrong. I am healthy. It was only some gas. <laughs> In our next joke, we have a man pleading with his rabbi because he would like to live forever. This man went to see the rabbi of his church. Rabbi, I don't want to die. I would like to live forever. However, my doctor said that it's not possible, and I thought that you might have a solution for me. The rabbi, after listening to the man's plea, asked whether the man was married. No, said the man, never got around to getting married, but if I know that I will live forever, I might just give it a go. The rabbi said that he would propose the man gets married. Why, asked the man, will this bring me eternal life? 
will it fulfill my desire to live forever, because married men all die. The rabbi with a smile on his face looks at the man and says, when you get married, you will not live forever, unfortunately. However, the desire to live forever will disappear. <laughs> in the following joke, we have a single man in a restaurant who would like to pick up a beautiful lady. John decided to go to this fancy restaurant. As he hasn't been with a woman for many years, he was in the habit of looking for any opportunity to meet a lovely lady. He sat down at his table, ordered a drink, and then his eye caught this beautiful woman standing at the bar looking at him. This gorgeous woman came up to him with a big smile on her face and asked if John was single. John's heart started beating fast and his stomach felt like butterflies. He looks into this gorgeous woman's eyes, thinking he won the jackpot at Vegas. He put on his best smile and said, Hell yeah, I'm single. She looks at John with those beautiful eyes, bend down towards him and asks, Will it be okay for you, since you are single, that I borrow this chair for my husband over there? Sorry, John. Better luck next time. <laughs> In our next joke, we have a guy that is very thirsty and urgently need to use the vending machine. This man was driving down the street looking for a vending machine to buy a soft drink, as he was in quite a hurry. He finally spots a machine and pulls over. He gets out his truck and walks to the machine and waits patiently as a beautiful blonde is using the vending machine. The blonde puts 50 cent in the slot, presses the button, and a drink pops out. She inserts another 50 cent in the machine, presses the button, and another drink pops out. The blonde with a big smile on her face does this several times. The man, being in a bit of a hurry, says to the blonde, Excuse me, ma'am, may I use this machine? I am very thirsty and in a bit of a hurry. The blonde with a smile on her face looks at the man and spoke. Are you crazy? Can't you see that I'm busy winning? <laughs> Our next joke is about a blonde that visits a hairdresser. This blonde goes to a hair salon to have her hair done. The blonde, however, has headphones on while sitting in the hairdressing chair. The hairstylist tells the blonde that she needs to take the headphones off so that she can cut her hair. The blonde refused and said that she will die if she takes the headphones off. The hairstylist attempts to do the hair with the headphones on. Having difficulty, the hairstylist again tells the blonde that she needs to take the headphones off. The blonde again said that she will die if she takes the headphones off. At this point, the hairstylist had enough of the blonde and yanked the headphones off. The blonde falls to the ground and just lay there unconscious. The hairstylist bends over and put the headphones to her ear. She listens to the voice on the headphones saying, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Our second last joke of the day is about this very unpopular farmer. This farmer was the most unpopular guy in the area. This is because he always treated everyone around him very badly. People were just happy if they never had to set eyes upon him again. He was, however, the wealthiest man in the area and lack for nothing. When his 50th birthday came up, he decided to have a birthday party like the world has never seen before. Knowing that people don't like him, he sends out an all-inclusive birthday party invitation for a weekend. Transportation, accommodation, food, and all the drinks will be on the house for this event. As it turns out, no one pitched for the party. Two weeks later, his phone rang. I am just calling about the party you have sent invites to. The farmer screamed. It was two weeks ago, are you mad? The guy on the other end of the line said, I was just calling to say that I won't be able to make it. <laughs> Here is our best joke compilation for the seventh week running. Today we bring you nine of our best jokes of the week, one after another. In our first joke, we bring you a man whose wife passed away in the Holy Land. So, this man and his wife decided to go on holiday to Jerusalem. It wasn't long, and his nagging wife fell ill and suddenly died. The funeral director went to the man with a few options to bury his wife. The funeral director said to the man, 
Sir, it would cost about $45,000 if we send your wife back to the States if you want to bury her there, or $500 if we bury her here for you in Jerusalem. The man with a worried look on his face looked at the funeral director and replied, Ship her home. The funeral director then replied, But sir, why don't you just bury her here in the Holy Land and you can save money? The man answered, A long time ago a man was buried here, and three days later he rose from the dead. I just can't take that risk. <laughs> in the following joke, we bring you four fathers that are waiting in the maternity ward for their newborns. Four men are in the hospital waiting room because their wives are having babies. Everyone very anxious to becoming a father for the first time when the nurse goes up to the first guy and says, Congratulations, you're the father of twins. Very proud and confused, the first man replies, That's odd. I work for the Minnesota Twins. The nurse looks at the second guy and says, Congratulations, you're the father of triplets. The second guy in complete shock answered, That's weird. I work for the 3M company. The nurse turns to the third guy and said, Congratulations, you're the father of quadruplets. The man almost fainted and lost for words says, That's very strange. I work for the Four Seasons Hotel. The last man looks at them and starts to cry. What's wrong? The others ask. Well, you won't believe this. I work. At 7-Up. <laughs> Our next hilarious joke is about people arriving at the gates of heaven. The angel was on duty at the gates of heaven when a nun approached. Tell me, what kind of life you have led on earth? I was a nun, she answered. See that big cloud over there? Go and sit on it, and here is a harp, said the angel. The next day, an old lady came to the gates, and the angel asked, Tell me, what kind of life you have led on earth? Well, I brought up six children to the best of my ability, she replied. Well, take this harp and go sit on that white cloud over there, the angel says. The next one to approach the angel was a brunette woman. Come, my dear, what kind of life did you lead on earth? I was a prostitute, said the woman. Oh, said the angel, see that black cloud over there? Go and sit on that. Well, what about my harp? Never mind the harp. I'll be up in a moment with the horn. <laughs> Our next joke is about a blonde that goes to a football game for the first time. A guy takes his beautiful blonde girlfriend to her first football game. They had great seats right behind their team's bench. She watched the game in silence. After the game, he asked her how she liked the experience because she was so quiet and never showed any emotion, and he got worried. Oh, I really liked it, she replied, especially the tight pants and all the players have big muscles, but I just couldn't understand why they were killing each other over 25 cents. Dumbfounded with what the blonde woman just said, her boyfriend asked, what do you mean? Well, before they started, they flipped a coin and one team got it. Then for the rest of the game, all they kept screaming was, Get that quarterback! Get that quarterback! I just could not understand it. Shame these poor guys? I mean, it was only 25 cents. <laughs> the following joke is about an open seat at a very important basketball game. It's the basketball season, and a man make his way to his executive seat. He sits down, noticing the seat next to him is empty. He leans over and asks the guy next to him, if someone will be sitting there. No, says the guy next to him. The seat is empty. This is incredible, said the man. Who in their right mind would have a seat like this for the final and not use it? The guy next to him says, well, actually the seat belongs to me. I was supposed to come with my wife, but she passed away. This is the first game we haven't been to together since we got married. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's terrible. But couldn't you find someone else, a friend, a relative, or even a neighbor to take her seat? The man shakes his head. No, he says. They're all at my wife's funeral. <laughs> the next very funny joke is about a barber shop and a guy getting his hair cut. Should you always pay for your services? 
Well, modern society teach us that we should, but will there be an exception to this rule? Here might just be one. This barber was busy with a client's hair when the client jumped up and ran out of his shop. This barber rushed out of his barber shop to find a police officer walking by. Have you seen a guy just now? Running out of my shop, he asks the officer. No, said the officer, but what have the guy done? The barber said that the man ran out without paying him for cutting his hair. The officer then asks the barber what the man looks like. The barber replied, well, his hair is cut short on the one side and long on the other side, as I haven't cut that side yet. Oh, said the barber, and he was carrying an ear in his hand. <laughs> now we bring you a joke about who is drinking what. Are you concerned about your health? Well, here is what you need to consider if you want to improve your health. Now, did you know that the Mexicans drink more tequila than the English? but they have fewer heart attacks than the English. The Japanese, on the other hand, drink less tequila than the English, and they also have fewer heart attacks than the English. Now, let's look at the French. They drink more wine than the English, but they have less heart attacks than the English. The Spanish, on the other hand, drink less wine than the English, and they also have less heart attacks than the English. By now, I guess you have figured out how to decrease your chance of having a heart attack and improve your health. Stop speaking English. <laughs> now our next joke is about a taxi driver that get a very big scare. The passenger in a taxi taps the taxi driver on the shoulder to ask him something. The driver screams, loses control of the vehicle, almost crashes into a bus, swerves over a sidewalk, and stops millimeters from a shop window. For a few moments, there is a dead silence in the taxi. Then the taxi driver said, don't ever do that again. I almost scared myself to death. The passengers apologize and say that he really didn't think that a tap on the shoulder would startle him like that, let alone almost killing them both. I'm very sorry, said the taxi driver. It's not your fault. It just happened so suddenly. Today is my first day as a taxi driver. For the last 20 years, I have driven a hearse for a funeral service. Up next is our best jokes compilation of the week for the eighth week running. In our first joke of the day, we bring you the perfect man. The ladies at a book club were all chatting when the subject of men came up. The first lady said that her perfect man will wake up early in the morning, do the beds, and then continue with cleaning the house. The second lady said that her perfect man exercise every day and that his body is in perfect condition. The third lady prefers a man that is punctual, with sober habits, early in bed, and an early riser. Once all of them were finished with their opinion about this perfect man, they turned to a lady that have not given her opinion. One of the ladies asks, and what is your opinion about the perfect man? The lonely lady then said, the only place you will find a man who wakes up at 5 a.m., cleans constantly, never drinks, helps with chores, is always on time, exercise every day, and goes to bed religiously at 9 p.m., is in jail. <laughs> Our second joke of the day is about a job interview. Here is a joke about a job interview. A young man, very confident about himself, went for a job interview. Towards the end of the job interview, the candidate was asked by the human resources officer what kind of salary he was looking at. Oh, about $100,000 a year, replied the confident young man with a smile on his face. Well, said the HR officer, what would you say to a package of $200,000 a year, eight weeks annual paid holiday, full medical and dental insurance, two thirds of your final salary as a pension, and a new top of the range company car every year? Wow, said the candidate to the human resources officer, you must be kidding me. The resource officer looked at the man, started laughing and said, well, with that salary request of yours, you must be kidding too. <laughs> we now bring you a joke about an old man at a grave. Two men were taking a shortcut through the graveyard when they spotted an old man weeping beside a headstone. They became curious and crept closer. 
trying to catch a glimpse of the mourner. The old man's voice, heavy with sorrow, drifted through the air. Every morning, I'd wake up with a smile, excited for the day ahead, and then everything went dark. My life, everything, is now a living hell. Tears streamed down his face as he choked out, Why, did you have to die? Why did you have to leave me in this mess? Feeling immense pity for the poor old man, one of the eavesdroppers stood up and asked the old man, Who was this person to you? The old man, wiping his eyes with a shaky hand, said, He was my wife's first husband. <laughs> now it's time for a simple computer joke. Want to hear a computer joke? A woman was sitting in the lounge reading the paper when she saw her husband rushed past her into the hall, looked at the doormat, and then went back to his study. A little while later, he came past her again, look at the doormat, and you can see he is getting annoyed and again goes back to his study. His wife looks at him and wonders what is going on with him today. Five minutes later, and the husband stormed, passed her again into the hall for the third time. Now the wife can't hold her curiosity regarding this behavior and asked her husband, Is something wrong, dear? You've been in and out of your office inspecting the doormat. Yes, there is, the husband replied furiously. My stupid computer keeps telling me, You've got mail. <laughs> the following joke is about a guy that got attacked at his house. You want to hear a joke about a guy that got attacked? One morning, a man was woken by a loud knock at his door. He gets up, puts on some clothes, and goes downstairs to open the door. However, when he opens the door, he is met with a six-foot spider that immediately starts to attack him. First, the spider head butts the man, then he tramples all over him, kick him in the back, and then finally kick the man on the head. The next thing the man remember is waking up in hospital with a doctor calmly taking his blood pressure. The man is very confused, but know that he has survived the attack on his live. He looks up to the doctor and asks what happened. The doctor said, I'm afraid there's a vicious bug going around. <laughs> the next joke is about a burglar that was caught at this guy's house. Now the husband wants information. A frantic man practically throws himself through the doors of the police station. He walks to an officer that looks in charge and said, I need to see the burglar you caught last night breaking into my house right away, he gasps. The desk sergeant, a man with a weary patience etched on his face, looks up from his paperwork. Sir, you'll have your chance to face the burglar in court. Just take a seat and I'll get your statement. The man, practically vibrating with nervous energy, said, No, officer, you don't understand. I don't want to press charges. I just need to talk to him. I need to understand how he got into my house. How he manages to sneak into my house in the dead of night without waking my wife. I've been trying that for years, believe me, and let me tell you, without any success. <laughs> the next joke is about a guy that's on his deathbed with four sons. A husband and wife had been married for many years and had four children, all of them boys. The oldest three boys had red hair, pale skin, and were all very tall. The youngest son, however, had black hair, dark skin complexion, and was very short. After a long illness, the man was lying on his deathbed. As it has always bothered him that his youngest son looked totally different to his other three sons, he decided that perhaps it was time to ask his wife about this. He turned to his wife and whispered, Darling, before I die, be honest with me. Is our youngest boy my child? The wife, in complete shock, gently replied, I swear on everything that that boy is your son. With that, the husband passed away peacefully. His wife, very relieved, muttered, Thank you so much for never asking about the other three boys. <laughs> Our next joke is about a really kinky husband. So, this guy came home from work one day very excited and cannot wait to see his wife. He immediately goes into the bedroom and jumps into bed. He then calls his wife. The wife came into the room and asks, And now, what's going on? The husband replies, You immediately need to get into bed with me. 
Now, as they haven't been romantic for some time, the wife immediately jumps into bed and start cuddling up to her husband. The husband then continues to pull the blankets over both of their heads so that the two of them are now completely in the darkness under the blankets. His wife whispered, Hmm, kinky. Just then, a little light came on under the blankets. The husband said, Honey, check out my new watch. It glows in the dark. I got it as a present at work. <laughs> now we bring you a joke about a priest on house visit, but the wife is still in her pajamas. Here's a funny joke about a priest. One winter's morning, a woman was busy in the garden, wearing pajama pants, when she saw the priest stopping in front of the house. She runs into the house and tells the domestic worker, the priest is here. Tell him I am just quickly running upstairs to take off my pants. I am coming now. So she runs upstairs, takes her pants off, puts a dress on, washes her hands, put red lipstick on, combs her hair, and goes downstairs into the lounge. She looks around, but there is no one there. She asks the domestic worker where the priest is, and she replies, I told him you just ran upstairs quickly to take your pants off. He said he quickly going to put the Bible in the car. <laughs> Our next joke is a joke about a scarecrow in the vegetable garden. Here's a nice scarecrow joke. This husband and wife were walking through their vegetable gardens when the wife made a comment, don't you think it's time to get a new scarecrow? Why said the husband, our scarecrow is still doing a great job. It is keeping the birds away from the vegetables. It's so effective. Not even the spiders visit the vegetables anymore. Yes, said the wife, but it's standing here day and night through the rain and all the bad weather. Let's change it a bit. The husband getting annoyed asks, why are you so concerned about the scarecrow all of a sudden? The wife said, okay, I have asked you nicely, but you don't want to budge. She then shouted at the scarecrow, mom, you can come into the house now. The children miss you. <laughs> now it's time for a joke about a married couple having a huge argument. A frustrated husband and his wife were locked in a disagreement of epic proportions. Voices were raised, cups and plates on the ground. Those arguments are never easy on the kitchenware, and accusations flew like rogue socks in a dryer. Finally, at his wit's end, the husband stands with his hands crossed as in defeat, muttering something about needing a vacation to the Caribbean, because clearly that would solve everything. He storms out the front door, slamming it shut with enough force to rattle the pictures on the wall. His wife, still angry, throws one last barb after him. Just go to hell, she shouts. The husband stops in his tracks, peering back at his wife with a look of utter confusion. So, you want me to go to hell? Does that mean you want me to come back into the house? <laughs> in our second last joke, we have a guy that got ill at work, but he's very scared for his boss. This timid little man worked for a big company as a clerk and was terribly afraid of his boss. One day when he felt ill, a colleague of his suggested he rather go home. The timid little clerk with fear in his eyes said, Oh, I couldn't do that without asking the boss. The boss would fire me if he found out. Don't be silly, said the friend. How will he find out? He'll never know. He's not even in the office today. So the little clerk, not feeling well, decided to take his colleague's advice and went home. When he got to his house, his eye caught something and he looked through the window. There was his boss, being passionately with his wife. He raced back to the office and rushed up to his friend. What a fine friend you are giving me that bad advice. He shouted, I nearly got caught going home. <laughs> now we bring you our ninth week best of the week jokes compilation. In the following joke, we bring you two desperate ladies sitting in a bar looking for a male companion. These two desperate single ladies were sitting at a pub on a Friday evening, having a couple of margaritas. The bar was always very busy on a Friday night. Couples were laughing and very few single available, men were visible. This two lady friends have even more margaritas to drown their sorrows. Suddenly, one of the desperate ladies locked eyes with a single man looking very sad, sitting at the bar. 
She nudged her friend and said, Look at that hunk. Her friend said, He looks very sad, but we are only interested in him being single. So, one of the ladies said, There is only one way to find out. She stood up and walks over to the man. She asks the man, And why are you so lonely tonight? The sad man said that he just got out of jail after 20 years for poisoning his wife. The lady shouted to her friend, He's single! <laughs> In the next joke, we bring you alien technology on planet Earth, which no one understand. Would you like to hear an alien joke, many light years in the making? This highly advanced alien was reading an anti-gravity book. He just couldn't put it down. It was all about planets and stars, and there he learned about a planet called Earth, unfortunately not highly rated because it had only one star. As he needed some space, he anyway decided to visit it. But because of inflation, he just could not afford to go on this trip. He then decided to send the planet Earth, a clear sign of their alien existence. It must be so grand that no one must be able to understand it. Many light years later, and even though Earth has come along, they are still trying to figure out exactly how this alien technology works. But to be honest, they have had little success. This alien technology, which no Earthling can understand, is today called a woman. <laughs> now we will bring you every man's worst fear, or enemy for that matter, a nagging mother-in-law. This guy and his friend were having a couple of beers at their local pub. The one friend looks at the other and said, you are looking very down today, mate. What on earth can be so bad that you are in such a terrible state? The first guy said that he has a terrible day ahead of him since he and his mother-in-law had this huge argument and then she normally ignores him for a whole week without speaking a single word to him. The second guy said, But I don't understand. Is that not every man's dream to have his mother-in-law not talking with him for a week? You can now have a week of bliss without her constant nagging. You should be smiling for the next week and not sulking like this. The first guy replied, Yes, I agree. Only problem is that we had that argument a week ago, and today she starts again with her nagging. <laughs> now, in the next joke, we bring you a husband that makes it clear to his wife, who he thinks is the boss in his house. This man wanted to make sure that his wife understand that he is the boss in this house. Now you listen here, sweetheart. From now, things are going to change around here. I am the boss of this house. When I get home from work in the afternoon, I want a three-course meal. The house must be in pristine condition. My clothes must be packed neatly in my cupboard, ready for my next days. The TV remote is mine for the evening. Please finish watching your series in the day so that I can spend my evenings on more important things like watching the football. The wife, looking very calmly at her husband, asks, and who will be dressing you in the morning? You will, said the husband. The wife then said, I was trying to tell you that with that attitude, the funeral director will be dressing you in the morning. <laughs> in the next joke, this widower go to visit a medium to make contact with his departed wife. This guy was in a session with a medium. The air was filled with nervous anticipation as the medium went into her trance. Moments later, she declared, eyes fluttering open, I sense a spirit, a woman, strong-willed, with a voice that could curdle milk. The guy's heart skipped a beat, he then said, Sandy, that's my wife Sandy. She seems eager to communicate. Are you ready, sir? The guy just stared, some sweat trickling down his temple. Sir, your wife is here on the other side. Don't you want to say something? The guy shifted uncomfortably and said, Not really. Why not? asked the medium. This is a rare opportunity. The guy leaned forward and whispered to the medium, If it's truly my wife Sandy, then you only need to be quiet. Trust me, Sandy will do the talking for both of us. <laughs> now we will bring you an old favorite, Little Johnny. This teacher was having Bible lessons in the class and were asking questions to all the kids. The only child she hasn't asked a question to yet was little Johnny. She knew that little Johnny was always a tough nut to crack, 
but eventually decided that he should also get a turn to answer a question. So, she asks, Johnny, if I give away everything I have to the poor people in need, will I be going to heaven? Little Johnny immediately said, No, ma'am. Okay, Johnny, now tell me, if I do only good deeds and never do any sin, would I go to heaven? No, ma'am, Johnny replied immediately. The teacher is clearly not impressed with Johnny's response to her questions, then asks, So, what do I need to do then to go to heaven, Johnny? Little Johnny replied, If you want to go to heaven, ma'am, you first need to die. <laughs> now, we will bring you something different. These two cars are having a chat at an intersection. These two cars were standing at the intersection. The one is very clean, and the other one is very dirty. The one car said to the other, My driver is the worst, he never cleans me, and I look like a mess. The other car said, Well, that's easy to sort out. All you need to do is to puff out some gas, and he will take you to get it sorted. Think service center, plug in diagnostics, and obviously, they won't find anything wrong. Then they will give you a perfect wash. You will look like a new car. Then hopefully the bill is big enough that he never does it again. The dirty car thought for a moment and then said, I don't think that will work. Every morning when my driver climbs into me to go to work, he puffs out some gas. And no matter how hard she has tried before, his wife could never get that sorted. <laughs> In the next joke, we have three professionals having a discussion about which professions is the oldest. A bricklayer, a carpenter, and an electrician were having a chat about the importance of their professions. The bricklayer then suggested that his profession have been responsible for the building of the pyramids. We built the pyramids of Giza, strong and secured after all these centuries, and that is why we must be the oldest profession. Case closed. Well, said the carpenter, in that case, we carpenters must be the oldest profession, because a long time before there were pyramids, we build Noah's Ark. The electrician, listening to all this discussion, started to laugh. Oh, and why are you laughing? Surely the electrician started much later than our professions. Not so, said the electrician. Right in the beginning it was said, let there be light, we sparkies. We already had all the cables laid out. <laughs> Now we bring you a regular, a drunken guy at a pub. There was this drunken guy at this bar. He was so drunk that the barman decided it was time for him to leave. I think you had enough and should leave, the barman said. The guy left, but soon peered into the second door of the pub. Is this the prickly pear pub? The barman shouted. No, I told you to go home. The guy left again and soon looked through the third door of the pub. Is this the broken biscuit? The barman shouted, No, I told you to go home. A short while later, the guy was back at the pub's fourth door and asked, Is this the rocky landmine? The barman had enough and walks the guy outside for a private chat. Look, buddy, I have had enough. You are drunk, and I told you many times to go home. Don't come back here again. The guy looked through his intoxicated eyes and asked, do all these pubs have the same idiot as a manager? Here is our 10th week, Best Jokes of the Week compilation. In today's funny short joke compilation, we bring you 11 of our short jokes, one after another. Our first funny short joke is about a boy that do not want to eat his veggies. Here is a funny short about kids not wanting to eat their veggies. This dad walks into the kitchen while his wife is having a bit of an issue with their young son. What's wrong? The father asks. The mom said that their son bluntly refuses to eat the broccoli that she has prepared for him. The father leans over and whispers in the boy's ear. The boy immediately starts to eat all his broccoli and then leaves for his room. The mother is very surprised and asks her husband, What have you told the boy that makes him eat all his broccoli? The father told his wife that he said to the boy that if he does not eat his broccoli, then his willy will not grow longer. The mother was dumbstruck. Then she turns to the father very angry and hit him with a cloth. What is that all about? The father asks. The mother replied, Now why did you not eat your broccoli? <laughs> <laughs> Our 
Our next funny short joke is about an old man that rear-ended this aggressive youngster. This old man rear-ended a car in traffic. The other driver, a young guy, jumped out of his car and immediately confronts the old man. Here is at least $5,000 of damage, he shouts. If you don't pay me immediately, I will beat the pulp out of you. The old man said that he does not have that kind of money, but that he will phone his son, who trains dolphins. As the old man is on the phone speaking with his son, the young guy took his phone and shouted, I don't care if you train dolphins as long as I get my $5,000 immediately, else I am going to hit the pulp out of this old man. The old man's son said that he will be there in 10 minutes and hung up. 10 minutes later, a pickup stopped and a huge man climbs out of it. He walks over to the scene and said to the old man, Dad, I told you before, I train Navy SEALs, not dolphins. <laughs> now we bring you a funny short joke about a forgetful old man doing shopping for his wife. In this funny short, we tell you how the old deal with forgetfulness. This old gentleman was walking through the supermarket to buy some food. The main item on his shopping list was a chicken, which his wife told him to buy. Unfortunately, his mind is not what it used to be, and he cannot think of the bird's name that he was supposed to buy. He wanders up and down the aisles looking for something resembling a bird, which should lead him to a chicken for his purchase. He stumbles upon a box of eggs. A glint of hope came onto the old man. Immediately he knew what he was supposed to buy. Very impressed with himself, he grabs the eggs and marched over to the teller. He then asks, Lady, please can you tell me on which shelf I can find the mother of these eggs? <laughs> In the following funny short joke, we have a mother that had enough of a clever teenager. This teenager was giving his mother grief. She did not allow her children to misbehave, not even aggressive teenagers that always complain about everything. She said to her son, if you are going to give me grief today, then I will unleash all hell on you and I will knock all 64 of your teeth out. Do I make myself clear? The teenage boy knew not to test his mother's patience so he went to get some comfort from his father. Now, the father was a very calm man and knew not to test the wife's patience, but he always aims to mediate a situation in his household. He said to his wife, Hey, honey, don't you think you should ease up a bit and a grown-up only has 32 teeth in his mouth, not 64? The wife glared at her husband and said, I knew you were going to stick your nose into our business, so I have included your teeth into the equation. <laughs> in the next funny short joke we have two hunters that want to overload a small plane these two guys went on a hunting safari the managed to shoot three huge animals and needed to fly it out of the hunting location the pilot looked at the three animals and said these animals are too heavy for the plane we will never make it the two guys said that they did the same hunt last year and had the same issue with the pilot but they eventually convinced him to load the animals. The pilot then agreed to load the three animals, and off they went. The plane struggled heavily to get into the air, but eventually managed. A short bit later, the plane could not handle the weight anymore, and crash landed. The two guys and the pilot stood outside of the crashed plane, and the pilot asked, Do any of you two know where we are? The two hunters looked around and agreed. Yes, it's exactly where we crash landed last year. <laughs> now we bring you a funny short joke about the top three fencing champions showing their skills. At a world fencing exhibition, three of the world's best swordsmen were out to proof their skills. The number three fencer in the world took to the stage. A fly was released and with a flash of his sword, the fencer cut the insect in half. The crowd cheered. Then the second best fencer in the world took to the stage. A fly was released, and with a flash of his sword, the fencer cut the insect in four. The crowd cheered. Now the number one in the world took to the stage. He was the main attraction of the evening. A fly was released, and with a flash of his sword, nothing happens. The crowd turned silent in disappointment. The fencer bowed to the crowd with a smile on his face. What are you so happy about? Someone shouted out, You missed. I never miss, said the fencer. That fly can never have children. <laughs> In the 
In the following funny short joke, we bring you a wife giving her husband some very bad news. A worried woman calls her husband at work. Honey, I got to tell you something that's very important, but you're not going to like it, she said. Hold on. The husband sighs. Work's insane right now. I have too much paperwork and a very important meetings to attend. Can this wait? No, it can't, said the wife. But there's good news and bad news. The husband immediately said, So long as you did not touch my new Ferrari, then you can give me the good news first. Well, the wife said, about that new Ferrari of yours, the airbag in the car, it definitely works. A beat of silence. Then, a huge groan travels down the phone line. Of course that must be the good news. How bad is it? <laughs> in our next funny short joke, we have this college girl having an important chat with her mother. Very funny. This 19-year-old daughter was home from college and asks her mother if they can have a private chat, as she has something on her heart and she needs her mother's advice. The mother sat her down and started to chat, knowing that the burning issue will come out soon. Now, tell me what's on your mind, dear. Mom, I am in love, but I need to get your opinion on something. And who should this lucky man be? Well, Mom, you know Jack, my friend from school, the one that used to walk me home from school. Yes, my honey, but isn't he a bit too young for you? Not him, Mom. I am in love with his dad. You can't get involved with that man. He can be your father. Mom, Please don't dare to tell me who I can and who I cannot fall in love with. And when does age have anything to do with it? When I said that he can be your father, I think you misunderstood me. <laughs> now we bring you a funny short joke about what woman wants. In this funny short, we will tell you exactly how much a woman likes you. A dating man, a married man, and a divorced man are having a chat at a pub. The dating man said, it has been said that if a woman agrees to go on a date with you, it is because she likes a little bit of what she sees from you. Makes sense, doesn't it? The married man replied, As time goes by and you feel it's time to ask her to get married, and she agrees, you should not forget that a woman agrees to get married to you when obviously she likes a lot of what she sees from you. Now the divorced man's head hung low as he replied, now you two gents must focus, because I would like to give you a warning. If a woman decides to divorce you, it's obviously because she likes everything that she sees from you. <laughs> In our second last funny short joke of the day, we bring you a wife and a mistress, being on the same boat cruise. This wife was reading about an all-expenses-paid cruise at a low price. She said to her husband, Look, a two-day cruise and very cheap, the husband has too much work so he can't go. The wife decides to go alone. The next day at the office, the husband's mistress brings the same all-expenses-paid trip to him. But again, because of work, he can't go. A week later, the man's wife returns from the trip and show him the pictures. On the pictures is his wife and his mistress. Who is this woman, the husband asks. His wife said, this crazy one, she slept with all the men on the trip. She's really cuckoos. Next day at work, the mistress brings her pictures, and again, the man's wife features in them. And who is this woman, he asks. His mistress said, nice woman, think she was on honeymoon. She never left her husband's side for a second. <laughs> Here is our 11th week running best jokes of the week compilation. In today's short story joke compilation, we bring you 11 of our best short jokes of the week, one after another. Our first short story joke is about a little girl in church. A little girl is uncomfortable during church service. Her mother whispered, Honey, are you feeling okay? The little girl shook her head. My tummy feels funny, she said. Why don't you go outside, sweetie? There are bathrooms on the other side of the church hall. It's far, though. The little girl nodded and left. Mom, worried, watched her going out the door. But within seconds, the church door creaked open again, and the girl reappeared, a grin plastered on her face. Are you feeling better, dear? The mother asked, surprised at her daughter's speedy return. All better, said the girl. But guess what? I didn't even need to go outside. 
Oh, what do you mean? The mother asks. The girl pointed towards the back of the church. There was a box right by the door that said, for the sick, so I just used that. <laughs> now we bring you a short story joke about a man needing a job. Here is a funny short joke about a man needing a job. A desperate guy needing a job knocked on the door of a mansion. I need a job, he rasped. The very wealthy mansion owner said, perfect timing. Paint the back porch black, son. Two coats, nice and even. Two agonizing hours later, the desperate guy staggered into the wealthy man's house. Done, he said. Double coat, just like you said. The wealthy man's smile vanished from his face. That quick? Impossible. What exactly did you paint? That can be so quick. The desperate guy wiped his brow and said, I know painting and I know cars. It's black now, two coats like you requested. Oh, and it's not a porch, it's a BMW Z3. So, about that payment. <laughs> the following short story joke is about two farmers having a misunderstanding. A British farmer moves in next to this farmer. The British farmer builds two new dams, a big dam and a small dam. The farmer is a bit worried because the two dams is so close to his fields. If the dams start overflowing, Al his corn will be washed away. Soon it starts raining. The farmer decides to go over to the British farmer and tell him his dams are full and he must open the sluices. Not long and the farmer is back. He is wet, his clothes are torn, and he has a black eye. What happened? His wife asked. I told him his dams are full and he started fighting with me, the farmer said. His wife is very curious about what her husband said to the British farmer, because she knows he does not understand proper English and asks, How did you ask him? I told him, You're big damn full and you little damn full too. <laughs> now we bring you a short story joke about a lobster. Here is a funny short joke about a lobster. A man was walking along the beach with a big lobster in his hand when he was noticed by an inspector who was coming out from behind the rocks. I saw you, the inspector said. You are going to get a heavy fine for taking that lobster out of the sea without a permit. The man said, but it's not my lobster, it's my pet. It stays with me every day. I bring it to the beach to swim and get some exercise. The inspector does not believe the story the man is telling him. It's true, the man says. I let it go into the sea, let it swim a while, and then take it home. Let me show you. So, he lets the lobster go into the sea. The inspector, satisfied, said, Right, you can call your lobster back now. The man looks at the inspector and says, What lobster? <laughs> in our next short story joke, we have a guy in a bar. A young farmer with a swagger in his step bursts through the bar doors. Under one arm, he carries a big rooster so magnificent its feathers practically shimmer. In his other hand, he has a toilet bowl overflowing with cash, a sight that could make any barman think doomsday have arrived. The grizzled bartender, used to seeing his share of oddballs, raises an eyebrow. Well, howdy there, son, he drawls. What brings you and your unique companions to this fine establishment. The farmer, a glint of mischief in his eye, throws a wink at the rooster. Look here, mister, he declares in a voice thick with hayseed. My father always said there are two ways to impress a pretty lady, either a mighty fine cock that I have here or a bowl full of money. <laughs> now we bring you a short story joke about a midlife crisis. Here is a husband and wife joke for you. This husband said to his wife, remember 30 years ago, we had a small apartment, the car was leaking oil, a little portable TV and a very old bed. However, I was sleeping with this hot 25 year old bombshell. The wife, seemingly not taking notice, just shrugged. Uh-huh. Now we have a house so large, we practically must scream at one another, a TV as large as our old apartment and a brand new luxury car in both garages but I sleep with a 55-year-old that's collecting dolls. The wife glared at him and said, you want a 25-year-old bombshell? Fine, just remember, 
With that comes two-minute noodles, a rusty car, and a 30-year-old couch. Happy hunting. The husband's eyes widen. Sorry, honey, maybe my midlife crisis can wait. <laughs> Our next short story joke is about Little Johnny and a doorbell. Now, here is a funny short joke about Little Johnny. Little Johnny's was meticulously balancing a smooth pebble on a wobbly tower of pebbles. Suddenly, he hears a voice behind him. It's the local priest, Father O'Malley. Fascinating rock garden you've got there, son, Father O'Malley said. Not a rock garden, Father, Little Johnny chirped. It's a, a doorbell. Father O'Malley said, a doorbell made of pebbles. Now that's a new one for me. Tell you what, son, let's give it a ring, shall we? Father O'Malley, with surprising agility for a man twice his size, scooped Little Johnny up. Little Johnny now reached the doorbell with ease. Father O'Malley lowered Little Johnny back onto the ground, expecting a thank you, Father. Instead, Little Johnny looked up at him with a naughty grin and spoke. Now, Father, we must run. <laughs> now we bring you a short story joke about two farmers that is illegally storing fuel. Here is a funny short joke about two farmers that were storing fuel in a drought. In a drought-stricken town, fuel was very scarce. These two sneaky farmers were stockpiling fuel illegally. Every night, they secretly filled drums with fuel and cleverly disguised them behind hay bales in case of need. One morning, the one farmer phone starts ringing. Hurry up, quickly go hide the fuel. The cops are looking for fuel that people are storing. Bury the fuel in your backyard. The farmer slammed the phone down, grabbed a shovel, and sprinted towards his secret stash. 30 minutes later, the phone rang again. The farmer answered cautiously. Hello, who is it? It's me, the other farmer replied. Did you bury it all? Yes, yes, I buried all the fuel. But what do I do with all the empty drums where the fuel was in? <laughs> now, our second last short story joke is about a boy bunking school. Here is a short joke about a boy bunking school. 15-year-old Jimmy, a teenager always up to mischief, is sitting on a couch watching a show on a blaring television. As the doorbell sound pierced through the house, Jimmy sees his grandfather looking through the window. Jimmy's grandfather came over to Jimmy and said, I looked through the window and it's your teacher Mrs. Smith with a bunch of flowers. I must assume you have skipped school and she is here to check on you. Why don't you go and hide and I will cover for you, the grandfather said. Jimmy, looking very surprised, said to his grandfather, No, Grandpa, you must go and hide. I will cover for you. How so? asks the grandfather. Jimmy jumped up and said, I told her I cannot come to school today because my grandfather passed away. <laughs> Here is our 12th week running and our last best jokes of the week compilation. Thank you so much for watching our mid-year compilation of our best short jokes. Here goes. In today's short joke compilation, we bring you 10 of our best jokes of the week, one after another. Our first joke is about a police officer breaking up a fight. A police officer was on patrol when he saw two guys fighting. He stopped to break up the fight and asks them to explain. The first guy said that it's his girlfriend's house and he is suspecting her of seeing another man. He decided to stake out the house. That's when he saw this guy around the house. The officer asks the second guy to explain. He said he was a burglar and that he was planning a break-in. The officer asks him to empty his pockets. He had a beautiful diamond ring and some tools. The officer confiscates it. The officer said that he will give both of them one chance. If he sees them in this area again, he will arrest them. They both left. Then the house's door opened and a beautiful woman asks, what's going on? The officer replied, nothing, babe. Your stupid boyfriend almost caught us. Here, I got you a nice ring. Our second funny short joke is about a genie being released. A guy was walking through the forest and he found a magic lamp in a pathway. He picks the lamp up and starts to rub the lamp as best he can and out pops a genie. The genie thanks the man for freeing him and offers to grant him three wishes. 
The man is ecstatic and immediately made a list of what he wants. First, says the man, I want a million dollars. The genie snaps his fingers and a briefcase full of money materializes out of thin air. The man is wide-eyed in amazement and continues, Next, I want a Porsche sports car. The genie snaps his fingers and a Porsche appears from a puff of smoke. The man continues, I have always battled a bit with the ladies, so I want to be irresistible to any women. The genie snaps his fingers and the man promptly turns into a box of chocolates. <laughs> now we bring you a short joke about a father having to explain the concept of being engaged to his young daughter. A young woman ran into the kitchen, practically vibrating with excitement. Dad, Dad, Mary just got engaged. Her dad, a man who could explain astrophysics to a toddler, looked up and said, that's great news. Did she show you the engagement ring? Yeah, it's ginormous. The young woman's little sister's brow furrowed. What exactly does engage mean? The father said, do you remember that shiny new bike I promised you for Christmas last year? Her eyes widened. The red one, precisely. Now imagine I give the bike in November. You knew it was yours. You fawned over it every time you saw it in the garage but you couldn't take it for a spin until Santa delivered it, right? Her face fell. Wait, so it's like getting a present you can't use? Yes, her dad replied, but you can at least play with the bell in the meantime. <laughs> in the next funny short, we bring you a joke about Superman. Clark Kent have come to the end of his life and was on his deathbed talking with his wife of 60 years, Lois Lane. Lois said that she has something to confess before he leaves this place. Honey, she said, many years ago, I had an affair with Superman. Can you forgive me? It only happened one night, but I regretted it ever since. Clark, being very weak, took of his glasses and said, it's okay, honey, I am Superman. You never knew that I was Superman. So according to me, you were always faithful. Oh, thank you so much, Lois said. You don't know what a weight that lifts from my shoulders. I am so glad we got that out of the way. Lois can now clearly understand that Clark's memory is not what it used to be. You can lift another huge weight of my shoulders if you can, just before you go be Batman, Lex Luthor, and Aquaman as well. <laughs> In our next short joke, we have some of Disney's characters. Please go put on your pajamas, said this mother to her young son and daughter. The boy, always trying to find a way out, said. But Tarzan didn't wear pajamas to bed, Mom, and he was very healthy. The mother replied, You go do as you are told, as you haven't done your cores. I did say the boy. No, said the mother, just because Pinocchio made a career out of lying does not mean you can try it as well. Pajamas, please. She now turns to her daughter. Not wanting to be outdone by her brother, the daughter immediately started by saying that Cinderella did not get into bed before 12. The mom replied, there will be no Cinderella in this house tonight, no sitting up till after 12. Pajamas, please. The mother, feeling exhausted, looks at the two of them and thinks to herself, luckily Snow White didn't come up. She lived with seven men. Now we bring you an old classic funny short. This joke is about animals getting intoxicated. The rabbit was walking through the bush when he saw a bottle of warm moonshine lying in the sun. He took a sip and immediately passed out. A little while later, the jackal came walking past, saw the rabbit lying there and the bottle of moonshine. The jackal think, before I eat the rabbit, I am going to have a sip of that moonshine. So he took a sip, but immediately passed out. Then the hyena came walking past saw the other two and the bottle of moonshine and think, I am going to eat those two, but we'll first have a bit of the moonshine. Took a sip and immediately passed out. Now the lion came past, same story as the other three, and he also passed out. Sometime later the rabbit woke up, have a look around, and saw the other three passed out. He thinks to himself, I am never going to drink again. I just become too aggressive. In the next short joke, 
we have a guy getting very bad news from his doctor. The atmosphere hung heavily in the doctor's office as the patient left the room. The doctor just gave the patient very bad news. The patient has rabies, and there is nothing that the doctor can do for him anymore. The doctor has given the guy one week to live. Outside, in the waiting room, he asks for a pen and paper from the receptionist, and he starts to write a list down. The doctor, having a chat with the receptionist, said, Poor guy, he only has one week left to live. Looking at the patient writing, he said, He must be writing his will now. The patient writes a list of names. His wife, his mother-in-law, his boss at work. The list continuous. When finished, he handed the pen back to the receptionist. He turned to the doctor and spoke. Let me get going. I have my bite list complete. The upcoming short joke is about a phone bill that's way too high. In this funny short, this father storms into the house, very angry, while carrying a phone bill. Who spends so much time on the phone, making all these calls? The father bellows. It's not me, because I make all my calls from work. Not me, said the mother. I also do all my calls from work. Their 15-year-old son, now very alarmed, starts to think of all the online gaming he's been doing when everyone is asleep in the evening. He is now trembling with fear. Dad, I haven't touched a phone, is all he can get out. But then the hero arrived, their ever-reliable housekeeper. Why all the commotion, she asks. The father said, the phone bill. You haven't been using the phone of late now, have you? The housekeeper replied, oh yes, I do, just like everyone else. I also use the phone from work. <laughs> now in this funny short, we bring you a radio station competition. This very conservative English radio station was running a competition. They had 10 giveaway prizes for 10 couples to win. These were a boat trip to a tropical island, all cost paid. However, you had to pass some very basic criteria. You must be fluent in English. Secondly, you must have a fixed job. Lastly, you must be a person with sober habits. No drinkers will be allowed to enter the competition. A guy with a very broken English phoned into the radio station. He said, I am not fluent in English. I drink, but only beers, and quite a bit when I have the opportunity, and I am currently out of a job, but I am still looking for a job. The radio presenter asks, but why are you calling in? You clearly don't qualify for our competition. The guy said, I am just calling to say that I will not be available for the trip. 